But here's what the Lord spoke to me in my time of prayer. And I want to read this to you. He said, the nations have fooled themselves, thinking they can build their kingdoms without me. They've made covenant with the devil, not knowing they've signed and sealed their own death warrant. The executioner cometh. The executioner cometh. He is nigh at the door. Hell is soon to show itself on the earth, and man is not prepared for its fury. Daily her mouth is widened. Daily the fools of this earth enter in. What is coming? No man is designed to withstand. He was not created to endure the torment of the coming hour. This battle that is coming to full manifestation is beyond the dimension and mental capacity to perceive. Watch this. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Hell has arrived, and with her is his fury of the underworld. When with her is the fury of the underworld. Watch, here's good news. Only my church can withstand what is to come. Rooted in me, armored by me, and covered in my grace. Fear not, for I've overcome the world. Father, thank you for these words today. I thank you for this opportunity to minister under the power of the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I ask for you to hide me behind the shadow of the cross. Let no man remember my name or the name of this church, but let them remember the name that's above every single name, the name of Jesus. We bless you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. And amen. So the powerful words for sure. Again, take it to the Lord. Take it in prayer and ask the Lord to confirm it with you. The title of the message the Lord gave me is Hell on Earth. Hell on Earth. I was in my office meditating before the Lord very early, praying, getting ready for the service. And those are the words that he spoke to me, Hell on Earth. And if you don't think hell is on earth now, I don't know what to tell you. But we haven't seen anything yet. And I must say this as a disclaimer, and I'm going to get it out. So uh, for, for all you pre-tribbers, those that are secret rapture type of people that believe you're out of here and there's never going to be problems, you probably want to shut me off, and you probably don't listen to me anyways, but you probably just want to go to the house because I'm not going to sugarcoat this message today because it's that urgent. And it will bring a lot of peace to you if you listen to the words being said under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because in this theological and eschatological debate or preaching or message, you will see the hope of God and the plan of God. It's right there in the book of Revelation. The problem is folks don't know it because the six-foot icicle standing before them doesn't preach truth. And what he does, he wants to placate to the people for money. Come on, somebody, nickels and noses, and the committee that's willing to send them out in the U-Haul. I wish I had somebody help me, but I'm glad you didn't hire me. Therefore, you can't fire me. So I'm just going to preach that. Is that all right? I want you to go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Yeah, the spooky book. How ridiculous that is. But pastors are afraid to touch the book of Revelation. And if they do, they get it from some book that they read, some left behind series or what have you. I want to talk about the Word of God and let the Word of God explain itself. Is that all right? So hell on earth. You're wondering what's happening in our world. You wonder what's happening in our news. You wonder what's happening with all of this craziness. You are watching the precursor to the greatest battle ever of the universe. And the greatest battle of the universe is not Armageddon. That's the battle of men that tries to come against God himself. But way before then, there was a deeper battle that raged way, way back in the beginning in the garden, which I'll share in a minute. And it has waged and raged throughout the history of humanity, but it comes to a climactic end, and we're watching it. The problem is, is that we dictate things by what we see in the natural rather than revealing what is in the spiritual and revealing what's happening in the heavenlies. And the only way to discern that is through the Word of God. The problem with most Christians today is that they discern end-time revelation through political lenses. I'm about to run around this church 
and their political lenses come from the pastors who give them their political view. I'm not interested in your politics. I'm interested in the Word of God. I'm interested in what Jesus had to say and what God cemented as truth in the Holy Writ because politicians will come and they will go. Seasons come and they go, but the Word of God never changes. I've given you time to find Revelation 12. Did you find it yet? And so we're going to preach on this, and we're going to knock down some golden cows and, and, and slay some calves. Is that all right? Let's begin. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Now the, the apostle John, he was seeing this revelatory historical process of prophecy. He's being shown uh, Israel. Now, there are different theological views on that, but they're wrong. It's about Israel. The center of all prophecy, the center of all end-time events is on the nation of Israel, not Manhattan, not Washington, D.C., not the Taj Mahal. It is Jerusalem and the very capital there of Israel. And so we're watching this as he is seeing something historical. There's a reason God's doing it this way. And the, uh, the moon was under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Do you all remember the dream that Joseph had? There is your Old Testament confirmation of a New Testament reality. And she is being with child, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. She's with child. How many of y'all know that Israel has gone through hell just to bring forth Jesus? Come on, somebody. Has gone through literal hell and destruction, not only for the rejection of God, Jehovah, but also because of the divine plan that God had for Israel. And God still has a plan for Israel. If you are the mindset of anti-Semitic replacement theology, you're in the wrong building because God always is married to who? The backslider and has not forgotten Israel, God forbid. He has a plan for them. And part of the end time persecution and the last day tribulation is to bring Israel into its rightful position. I wish somebody would help me. And the world is travailing, waiting for that day when the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords comes back to his city. Where is his city? His city is Jerusalem. Is anybody there? So he's got to come back to a city that belongs to him. He's got to come back to a nation that's in existence. And you and I are watching it. Is anybody? We're watching this happen. And, and so it's exciting times. But this is a description here. Watch this. He's going to bring forth a child. Who is that child? That child is Jesus. Verse 3 begins to explain. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Everybody say another wonder. So we have one, one, one wonder and then another wonder. In other words, one thing that was uh, dramatic and then something else that was dramatic. And behold, a great red dragon. Now, here's where you lose a lot of people because people just don't believe in the devil. In fact, a recent Gallup poll has said that uh, the majority of the Americans are now not believing in certain spiritual aspects that are out there, one of them being God and the devil and angels and things of that nature. It's starting to trend downward. And so there's a lot of people who don't even believe in the devil. You better believe there's a devil. I said, he's out to steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus came to give us life, life more abundantly. But to know my enemy is to know my friend. If I know my Savior, I will know my enemy because my Savior talked about the enemy. And he said there would be somebody that would try to destroy me. Is anybody here today? And I should know about my enemy. But the problem in the church is we don't talk about the enemy because we're afraid of him. Ah, somebody help me now. I've heard preachers say before, you know, I don't want to say nothing about the devil. I don't want to get him stirred up. You can't stir the devil up. He's already stirred up. <laughs> He's already stirred up. You might as well just deal with him. And so look at this, the great red dragon. By the way, the word great there in the Greek means huge. 
Let me, let me just stop for a second here, and I am not exalting our arch enemy whatsoever, but I need to announce something to you. This is not some little dirt devil. Somebody better help me. This is not a little devil with some horns and a little tail. The Greek word means huge. He's a huge red dragon. He is large. He is powerful. He has a lot of authority that has been delegated to him. And one of the biggest make mistakes you can make in the house of God is to belittle the devil. You must recognize and realize he is an enemy, and there will come a day when he has full reign of the earth. Watch out now. See, we don't talk about that, but I'm going to talk about it. Let's kick over calf number one. Is that all right? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. We're not going to get into the total eschatology view, but he's talking about dominion and kingdoms and what he's going to do with them later on in the book of Revelation. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, talking about the demons, talking about angels, and did cast them where? To the earth. Where did they go? To the earth. And when you begin to recognize and realize the problems of the United States of America are not political. Though I would like to have somebody that knows how to drive the thing, I recognize and realize, come on somebody, on either side, I'm going to offend everybody. But the devil that has been what? The angels, the demons have been what? Cast to the earth. And, and so they have been removed from their position. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I really want to preach this, but I'm trying to set this thing up. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go granny gear. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. So how many of y'all know there's demon power on the earth? Then quit blaming your brother. Quit blaming the government. Quit blaming this person. Quit putting fingers on people and put it on the devil. Now watch now. There's a devil loose. And he drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them on the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. He was right there in the delivery room, wasn't he? For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, I don't have time to preach this, but I'm going to tell you, there's a reason why sometimes your dreams and your destiny don't come to full birth. is because you got a devil that don't want you to give birth to what God has promised you. Yeah. Hallelujah. You need to chase him out of the delivery room. Daddy's only. Are you here? And so as soon as it was born, verse 5, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron, talking about Jesus. I love this part right here because I don't have to worry about politics because my king's coming with a big stick. Woo, glory to God, he's going to fix this thing. He's going to make this thing right. He said he's coming with a rod of iron. See, here's another problem, misconception we have in the church. We're trying to preach a Jesus that's holding a little lamb around his shoulders. Come on now that's walking around in sandals instead of showing the one that his eyes are full of fire for the passion of his people and his feet look like fire and bronze and brass. We're talking about an almighty God. We're talking about a savior who's now the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He's victorious and his vesture is dipped in blood with a name king of kings and Lord of lords. Woo, glory to God. Oh, he is my great shepherd, no doubt about it. And I can go in my mind and go into the Psalms and picture him that way. But I'm going to tell you something. If you live in that, he'll never be your warrior king that he really is. I said he's a warrior king today. And the church needs to learn how to roar like the lion of the tribe of Judah instead of purring like a little kitty cat. Come on, somebody. That's moron catnip. <laughs> I know because I see it every Sunday. Meow. <laughs> Come on, help me, church. And she brought forth a child who was to rule the nation with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Where's Jesus? He's with God. He's on his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she prepared a place 
where she hath prepared a place of God that they should feed her a thousand and two hundred and three score days. So here he kind of mixes in the progressive prophecy of history and then shows what's going to happen in the future. Obviously, John is talking about the time when Israel's is persecuted and goes into Petra, and the land is in Jordan. There's coming a day when Israel will own much, much more land than they own now. Why? Because it was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's not what you see on the little sliver of a map. Somebody help me now. So in order for that to happen, your enemy never freely gives you access to freedom. You have to fight for it. So there's coming a time of great battle and coming a great time of war. Now, the church, for some reason, is scrambling to find a bunker and a place under a tree to find peace when we need to go to the front line of the battle lines and begin to preach this gospel to the nations of the earth and face our enemies and face our giants and say to hell with the devil, and we're going to preach this thing because we know our king is coming and we got a job to do because greater is he that's in us and he that's in this world. Is anybody here with me today? instead of freaking out about the signs of the times and everything happening. I said, we need some bold people today back in the body of Christ. And so he's showing this future persecution. Then in verse 7, he begins to explain it more clear. Aren't you glad for that? And there was a war in heaven. There was a war in heaven. Now, please understand this. Let me make this very easy for you to understand because maybe your pastor in the past didn't teach it properly. The war in heaven is not where God is. He has perfect peace. And the Bible declares that before his throne is a sea of glass. That's called tranquility. So if you think there's a gangland war going on, gangland war going on in heaven, you're, you're mistaken. And if you think the devil was able to go up and rebel in that throne room, you're also mistaken, and you have now weakened God. God already dealt with that devil and threw him to the third heavens. Anybody here put him in his place? But it says that there's a war in the heaven, the place where Satan abides, and that there is coming a day when this war will be manifested on the earth. And the reason you're seeing the crime, you're seeing the craziness, you're seeing the war, you're hearing of wars and rumors of wars, all of these things are part of the precursor to the great war that will take place in heaven but will be manifested on earth. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I understand as I look through the landscape of America and the window of my home and I see the craziness, I understand through the word of God that this is all part of the battle and therefore I don't pick up a sign for a certain political entity or go into a certain political camp and rah-rah shiskamba realizing and recognizing that they are not my answer and they never will be the answer and man can't fix this thing it's impossible I'm just going to tell you like it is. If you've got some great hope of some great dream utopia, uh, you know, whatever, good for you. Have it. Enjoy yourself. But I want to live in reality. I don't want to put hope in man. I'll tell you right now, I put hope in man before, and he has let me down. I said every time. Said I'll be there at four, didn't show up until six. Is anybody here? I'll help you out. I'll be right there. And some of the worst people are the church people. I'm right with you, Pastor. <laughs> uh-huh. What's that knife doing? <laughs> You'll find it's in your back. Come on, church, help me. <laughs> and there was war in heaven. Here's what I want you to see. One of the things that, that Jesus said, remember the disciples, Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, he said, what's the sign of the times? And everybody's wondering, well, you know, when's, Jesus, when's Jesus coming back? Jesus said one of the things besides deception would be war. So Jesus says it and answers it, but then we in the church rebuke Jesus. And then we sit there and we say, no, nah, that can't be. That. Maybe he didn't mean war. Maybe he meant roar. 
Maybe there's a miss. <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong here. And then we want to reinterpret scripture when Jesus out of his own mouth, the word of God, the word of life said, there will be war. And you can't know true peace until you have war. I've said this a thousand times, but we're looking for this peace. I just want to find peace. I just want everybody to leave me alone. I just want the world to go away. Well, you can have inner peace. You can have peace with God. You can get under that secret place with him. You can have that peace that passes all understanding. But this world is nuts. They're going crazy. They want to kill each other. And can I tell you something? That's part of the plan. That is part of man's plan because of the heart of man is to kill. And the heart of man is to destroy. And the heart of man is to pull down one another when influenced by the devil. And so the war that's happening in the heavenlies is shaking what's happening on the earth. And the demon power that's here already is starting to rise up to their call and what they are going to do, their call of duty and their assignment. But the church is asleep. I said the demon powers are awake. That's why they're wrecking havoc and that's why they're doing what they're doing. But the church ought to be doing the opposite. The church ought to be shaking the gates of hell. The, the, the church ought to show forth the power and the manifestation of a holy God. And I prophesy to you, America, God is going to shake his church. He's going to wake his church and power will come back to the house of God. I said power will come back to the house of God. And it begins with you and it begins with me. But we have to recognize we've got an enemy. We have to recognize there's a war. We've got to recognize that devil is going to destroy and fight against him the best that you possibly can. Watch this now. This is only just the beginning. Jesus warned of this. And it says there's a war in heaven, Michael and his angels. Michael's what? An archangel. Archangel and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. Could you imagine the battle that was? That wasn't a girl fight. No pun intended, ladies. That's one of the worst fights I've ever seen is two ladies fight. That's danger. I mean, <laughs> one time they had women's boxing on, man. I had to shut it off. I was like, man, they're going at it. Barbaric. Come on, ladies. And prevailed not. Somebody say Hallelujah. Prevailed not. That's where all preachers stop right there and they preach and run around and throw hankies in the air. But let's continue, please. And neither was their place found anymore. Where? In heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 says what? That, that the devil is the prince of the air. And watch this. And he worketh in the children of disobedience. This is where I want to break this microphone. So if I recognize that he's the prince of the air in that heavenly realm, then I recognize and realize he's working in the children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience or the sons of disobedience? Those are the ones that don't do the will of God. So everybody outside of the circumcision, everybody outside of the common covenant of Christ and washing the blood is a son of disobedience. Watch this, America, and you want to go vote for somebody who's a son of disobedience. And you want to have legislation that has been made by sons and daughters of disobedience, not recognizing that the prince of the air worketh in them. Read it, Ephesians 2.2. 2. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, and spiritual beings and authorities in heavenly places. Where were the prince of the air is? So my battle's not Republican. My battle's not Democrat. And it amazes me. I talk to some good old folks. I mean, they, they love God. They're Johnny Reb. I, I get it. They, they, they got the musket. They're, they're ready to go start a revolution. Is anybody with me? Might be talking to somebody here. May have a family member. But you're listening to me. You know what I'm talking about. And I get it, and I appreciate your fervor and patriotic, whatever you call it. But what bothers me on the second part of the conversation is they say they're a believer. 
Now, the first part is natural human instincts to fight. But when you're a believer, either you don't believe the Bible or you're ignorant to the plan of God. In other words, I cannot get mad on the left or mad at the right and say one has the answer and one doesn't have, and, and just fight and bicker and get all crazy. Watch this. All crazy over the politics of my nation, recognizing that the prince of the air works in them. I'm talking to mature people now. If you're over there still sucking on a bottle, I can't help you. But if you like T-bones or ribeyes like I do, you can handle this message. Come on, somebody. Let's just get the knife out. Let's cut this bad boy. Let's put some steak sauce on it and some Texas peat. Let's finish it off. It needs to be told. It needs to be said. Because I love them. And I thought to myself, what if they would just turn that passion Oh, that Davy Crockett had. What if they just turn that thing a little to the side? Come on now. What if they just got a little truth in them and they recognize and realize that I'm not against politics. I'm against the spirit that is driving our nation insane. I'm against the pedophilia and the LGBTQ movement of demon power. I'm against my enemy. I'm not against flesh and blood. Then it changes my focus. Focus, it changes my fervor for life, and it also changes my passion. Come on now. I won't be campaigning for an entity. I will be campaigning for the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords because I'm going to win with him. <laughs> I'm going to win with him, and there ain't no doubt about it. The Bible says so. It's so amazing to me. People get all excited about some 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 deadbeat politician, and they're the best thing since Moses. How many all know what I'm talking about? And they turned out to be rotten, stinking flesh, because that's what they all are. Come on now, if you don't know Christ, I'm reading to you the word. Either you believe Ephesians two two, or you don't. Right now, some people would rather pull that out of Scripture and say, no, that don't apply to everybody. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because when you and I didn't know Christ as Lord and Savior, we were a pawn of the devil. Where he said, go party, we partied hardy. Come on, somebody. He said, get a six-pack. We said, yes, sir, we got a 12. Is anybody here? We went over and above. Yes, we were. Yes, we did. You know it's the truth. I know what I was like. When you talk about party animal right here, buddy. <laughs> it, it didn't start till I got there and didn't finish till I wobbled out. Is anybody with me? I'm ashamed of those days, but I'm just telling you, you all the same. You just the same thing. You're you're just your halo's crooked on your horns. You're trying to look cute in church. Y'all catch that later. Y'all rough today on a Saturday. He prevailed not. Neither was her place found anymore in heaven. He got evicted. He was already evicted. Now watch this. The devil falls twice. He was evicted the first time out of the throne room of God. Then he gets evicted again. How many of y'all have ever been evicted? I have. I was evicted one time in my life. That was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. In fact, I had 30 days to move out. I was gone the second day. I wasn't, it wasn't no sheriff picking me up. I was gone. I'm t- can I just tell you the truth? You ought, to, you ought to see my old Ford LTD I had with a, with, a, with a couch tied to the top of it. I was gone. That's a true story. <laughs> I was poor, man. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Forget a U-Haul was a me-haul. Me-hauling on out of here. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but that's all right. Where was I before you interrupted me? <laughs> Are you still in the Bible? <laughs> yeah, he was evicted. I'm talking about eviction, by the way. He was evicted once. He's evicted again. So he, now he's out of the throne room of God. He's in that heavenly place, 
And then the Bible declares there's coming a day when he'll be cast from there. Are you listening to me, house of God? That's why I get up here and I preach and I keep telling you it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. There is no road rose garden without thorns. It's not going to get better. We are at the PNR, the point of no return. And people get mad at me and they write me stupid letters and all these different things. They get all upset because your pastor won't tell you the truth. I can't help you. All I can do is follow us on this journey. We're listening to God and we're reading his word. I wish it wasn't so. Can I just tell you that? I, I, was, I was raised up in theology and, uh, and understanding of eschatology that we're all out of here. But the more I read the Bible, I found out that ain't so. And then I learned history and found out no other early church father or historian believed it until the 1800s. And it became a gospel enterprise staple in our seminaries and cemeteries where these guys were birthed out of that went all through our denominations. And then it became a stronghold of ideology and false teaching. That's what it is. Because anything that is contrary to truth is counterfeit. Come on, somebody. And I'll get people get mad at me and I'll say to them, well, let's just, let's do that. If you don't, if you don't believe the word, let's do the old tested uh, way of testing things out. Ready? Time. Let's just find out. Come on now. I'm not trying to make anybody mad. I'm just trying to get somebody to read the Bible. I'm just trying to get somebody stirred up. They say, uh, look, quit trying to get out of here and put your dukes up and let's fight this good fight of faith. Let's reach our neighbors. Let's reach the people in this world. Let's preach and let's wait on the king to come. But we're going to go through some stuff. And I need you. That's one of the reasons I preach so hard, because I need you. I need somebody in the foxhole. I need somebody with me on the front line. And if you don't know the battle plan, you ain't going to do no good. You might as well go back with the cook and get fat. Watch out, somebody. Don't look around at your neighbor. <laughs> I know he's talking about you. No. Watch this. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, the devil. And Satan. I love how John just says, look, don't, 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 don't misunderstand who this is. This is that dog, the devil, the serpent. This is the one in the garden. This is the great big red dragon. See, that's, that's why you need to make it plain to people. What's the problem in America? The devil. The problem with humanity is the human heart. The human heart is corrupted. And if you don't have Holy Ghost preaching, repentance, and offering the altars and Christ to the people, then their hearts become hardened. That's why have, we have so many people in America that are fading away from religion, if you will, and away from God himself. We don't have preachers who have a backbone that'll preach conviction under the Holy Ghost because we're so afraid of the faces and afraid of the money and afraid of the committee and all these different things that they become paralyzed and their message becomes petrified. It's just, it's just old. Come on, somebody. Well, the old gospel's the way I like it. I get it. Come on now. I get it. The old rugged cross. I get it. But, honey, at some point, you got to move past the cross, get to the resurrection, and talk about the coming of the king. Come on now. you got to be progressive in your, your understanding of what God has for you. Come on now. I love old things, but, you know, come on. We need to move on when it comes to truth. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan. What does it say next? Which deceiveth just the Democrats. Man, let me, let me, let me get a little more comfortable here. No, no, that's not what it is. No, let, let, me, let me try again. Which deceiveth just the Baptists. Goodness gracious. Which deceiveth the Republicans and Pentecostals and Charismatic? No. Which deceiveth what? The whole world. The Bible declares that the whole world lieth under the power of the evil one. This is his earth. Oh, y'all ain't helping me now. This is his earth temporarily. 
He took the lease from Adam, and Adam sinned and committed high treason against God Almighty. So God banished him and removed him from the garden. And the enemy began his plan of conquering and dominion. God spoke to the devil. Watch this. He spoke to him in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that you would bruise, uh, you would bruise the hill. Come on now. Talking about Christ, that the seed would be against each other, the seed of the woman. I don't know if you know this, but women don't have seed. They receive seed. You know, it's talking about the birth of Christ. And that seed of the woman would bruise his head. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody with a head injury. They don't do too good. And that's why the enemy doesn't recognize or realize he's defeated because he has a head injury. And you wonder why people around you are hard-headed. They're just like their father, the devil. I'm just trying to help you. And no matter how much truth you give them, they just don't get it. And so Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 was a declaration of war. So God says, I'm going to have, have a war with you. And so ever since they got out of the garden, what happened? Death came. Cain killed who? Abel. And blood was shed. See, the devil didn't know from whence that seed would come. I'm going to run around this building. And so he tried to destroy the seed. He just tried to destroy Israel. And that's why the wars have taken place over the times of century, and especially against Israel, and why King Herod tried to kill the firstborn males. Help me now, and even Pharaoh. And all those things that happened there, representing trying to persecute in Egypt, and all or not, it goes, these are all precursors to this war that is coming on the face of the earth that you are now seeing happen the hell on earth. And I, I, it makes so much sense to me. It's so easy to see, but it, it just amazes me how many Christians don't get it. They just don't get it. They, again, they look at somebody else. They look at a political entity. Oh, if we could just get so-and-so in there, we're going to change this country. <laughs> Come home, somebody. American flag popping off their arm. I mean, you know, I'm like, man, I love you. I could use you in my house, in the church. We could use you here, man. If you could just get your knucklehead straight. If you could just get that little, ah, that's messed up in your brain. And become a Christian, you do something great for God. I really mean that, folks. And I know, and I, my children know, I try to walk away from people like that because I'm like, oh my, oh no, don't start this. It happened to me the other day. Guy said to me, if we could just get wild, was it wild herp? Wild herp? Wild herp? I don't know who the dude is. That's how much I know. Uh, he's a gunslinger, wasn't he, or something? I'm like, yeah, that's what we need. Just a guy up there shooting everybody. <laughs> That'll fix it. We got dead bodies everywhere all over Pennsylvania Avenue. That sounds like God. Whoa, yeah, good. You understand what I'm saying? And then on the next side of the mouth, it's all about God and Christianity. I'm like, no, you got it mixed up, man. You got it mixed up. It's a mixed bag, and we don't need that in the house. Are you all still with me? I'm not done yet. I'm just getting really started. Which deceiveth the whole world. So the whole world will be deceived. And he was cast out into the earth. Where's the devil coming to? The earth. Why do you think the earth is shaking? Why do you think the demons are getting ready? Why do you think assignments are happening with powers and powers of principalities and all these things? Why do you think it's happening? Because there's, like, we're waiting on our king. They're waiting on their prince. This is so easy to see. A, a child can see this. The enemy has a prince. The enemy has a false kingdom. That kingdom is coming to the earth. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's in the waiting, but it's manifested how? By the Holy Ghost. So we have the first fruit or the seal of what God is going to do later. And
when we manifest the resurrection of Christ and the destruction of the enemy through the preaching and signs and wonders and miracles. But at the same time, the enemy is shaking every institution in America, every portion of society, destroying our children, and it's not just political. America, hear me. And you're going to be inundated and saturated with all this political garbage for the next how many months? I don't know. And once that election is over, then we're going to have maybe a break of about a week. And then we're going to elect a dog catcher. Come on, somebody. You see what I'm saying? It's a cycle, and God doesn't operate on that cycle. He operates on truth. Man, I wish I had somebody to help me. And I preached hard, hard, hard over the years trying to get America, trying to get folks in this community, trying to get people to recognize and realize we trust what the word says. That's the blueprint, not some political promise. You can't even screw those guys in the ground straight. And you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. Well, we got to have somebody to lead us. I get it. Don't write me. I understand that. But I'm not foolish. I'm not going to put my hope in a man and think, yeah, this is it. Because hope deferred makes the heart sick. And we got a lot of sick people, a bunch of crazy QAnon people who are sick. Their families are sickened. A lot of people have been wrecked. They've been ruined. They've lost their Christianity. They lost their faith in God because of all this political craziness. I'm tired of it as a pastor. I want to see people stable. I want to see people stable in their mind and their spirit and be focused like a laser. This is what I'm supposed to do with my life. I'm not worried about the economy. I'm not worried about these things because Jesus said it would happen. And if I follow his blueprint, I'm going to be all right. Isn't that so? I mean, if you just follow instructions, you're probably going to be okay. Come on now. There's been many times I told my wife, I don't need that garment. I don't need that little. I got it. I'm going by memory. <laughs> you ever done that? Go on a trip say, I got this. Now, where's that tree they cut down? You better go by the word. Watch this. I'm trying to finish. I got plenty of time, though. Don't get nervous. Who deceiveth the whole world, he's cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So this is talking about another aspect to this war. So the devil is on the earth at this particular junction, according to Scripture, in the end time. But watch. And I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now. Everybody say now. There's coming a now. That's one of the things I want you to see. I wrote that down pretty clear in my notes. Now. There is a now coming. See, we don't believe in the now. We, 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 don't, we don't believe that God's going to do something now. We don't believe that God's going to do something at hand or suddenly. We believe we got time. We believe we can just ride this thing out and we're out of here. No, now. But look at the good news. Now there uh, is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For what? The accuser of the brethren is cast down. So two things you see, the one who deceives and the one who accuses. The one who deceives and the one who accuses, then before our God day and night. So here you are, they're excited in heaven because now they don't have to deal with that. And they recognize and realize that the coming of the king and the releasing of all of the curse of the earth is coming. See, there's a good side to the word of God. There's a good side to the eschatology, if you will, of the word of God, the end times. Preachers just don't preach it right. They just want to talk about all the bad stuff and the lightning and the death and all these things. But there's a good thing about it. There's coming a day when God's going to shut up that devil who's been deceiving you and me and who's been accusing us in heaven. Did you know that? That's what the devil does. That's his job. He accuses you. That's why condemnation comes on you. That isn't you. That's the devil condemning you. That's the devil pressuring you, saying you're no good. You're this. You're that. And you have to shut him up and remind him. Just go get the Bible out and read that scripture right here. (laughs) And rejoice with heaven. 
and say, now, now you need to shut up. Watch this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Now, here, here's where I lose a lot of people because, you know, you're already raptured and you're in heaven eating lamb chops and whatever you all doing up there. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Who's he talking about? They, the brethren, those that are rejoicing for they watch this. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, modern preachers, this is where they shout right here. This is where they go crazy. The organ starts to the, 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 the crank up. And everybody starts dancing. You know, granny throws out her weave. <laughs> and uh, Sister Lulu bucks off her, uh, what's that under thing? <laughs> her slip. I'm laughing because I seen it happen one time in church. This lady was bucking and shouting. She was doing her thing. Her slip fell down. She grabbed it, kicked it up, picked it in her hand. She kept on praising God. I said, yeah, baby, go for it. Ain't no shame in the game. <laughs> what are you going to do now? It's down there. I mean, everybody saw it. Just maybe they didn't. <laughs> But everybody gets excited. Yeah, man, the blood of the lamb and our testimony. First of all, he's talking about you being here. How am I overcoming to come, my accuser? I'm overcoming by the blood of the lamb. The blood's going to help me. Well, how are we going to make it through the end times, pastor? The blood. How are you going to make it through the rest of this day? The blood. It's the blood of the lamb. And the word of their testimony. What's your testimony? The word of God. My testimony is I once was blind, but now I see. Come on now. I was dead, but I'm alive. I was bound, but I'm free. That's my testimony. My testimony is I've gone through hell and back, and back is better. Come on now. We got to have a testimony again. Tell people why you're happy. Tell people why you're saved. Tell people why you bless. blessed. It's because of Christ. And the church is going to have to get that backbone again where we... We declare, but watch this. Yeah, we're all excited about that, but here's the part where they forget to preach. And they love not their lives unto the death. <laughs> Woo, yay! Right? That's the rest of it. Don't take it out of context. Keep it in there. So in other words, we don't have a martyr attitude. We just say, I don't care about this life. Whatever God has for me, that's what he has for me. The blood's got me. My testimony has me. The word has me. And if I have to die for the sake of Christ, see you. Now, let me tell you something. If you had that kind of boldness, what could the devil do to you? What could man do to you? Nothing. 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 The Bible says to be absent of the body is to be with Christ. So I'm I'm automatically part of that great cloud of witnesses. So why don't you live full of grace and faith instead of fear? I'm, I'm just trying to shake somebody out of your coma. Because we're so petrified, we're so afraid to witness and evangelize and go to the jails and go to the nations of the world and do this because we're worried about our stuff. Who gives a rip about all your stuff? 99% of your stuff comes from China anyways and is subject to break by morning. No pun intended. But you know it's the truth. I said that one time in Cuba and they was real silent and there was a pastor's conference and they just looked at me because everything they own is from China. They're like, there's no hope. Rod knows what I'm talking about. Even the chair was sitting. I mean, you know. I said, bad translation, bad translation. I didn't think about it. But it's the truth. Come on now. If you Chinese don't write to me, I'm just saying. I'm just trying to say. In other words, life is fragile. I don't care if it came from Sweden, <laughs> wherever. It doesn't matter. You can have the finest stuff. It doesn't matter. One day it's going gonna, it's gonna to go away. And one thing's for certain, you're going away and you can't take nothing. Baby doll, you're going to sign it over to everybody. And if you forget to sign it, don't worry, they got something called probate. Probate know how to share everything. 
don't worry. They got you covered. The government is not going to let you go leaving this earth without taking care of somebody. Don't worry. They love you. Is anybody here? So you might as well go out with a gusto. I mean, seriously, sometimes I walk around my house and I think, what am I going to do with all this? Seriously, I have so much stuff. and I, I'm not a rich guy, but it's stuff. Because I'm a hoarder, by the way. I mean, I just keep stuff. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, <laughs> I just a little bit. I mean, there's just certain. I mean, that nut that came out of that, 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 that putting that thing together, I need that nut. That bolt, <laughs> you never know. Come on, men, wave at me if you know that's true. And how many men can tell their wives, I did need that nut and that bolt one day, and I did. You pull that little drawer, you go, oh, yeah, there it is. See, we're not as crazy as you think we look. Come on now. But I look at it, and I say, I, I, I got to give, give it away. I got to do something with my life. I got to do something with my age, my talents. I got to do something because this is all I get. But when I look in the eyes of, of, of eschatology and I look in the word of God, I recognize and realize this hell on earth is coming in a greater form and fashion. So all of it doesn't make a difference anyways. So give it away. Do it. Preach. Live. Go to the world. Do it. Go to your neighbor's house. My God, you want to go to a foreign nation? Go to Walmart. You can't say Kmart anymore, but you can say Walmart. And Dollar General is just about as bad now. That's another planet. <laughs> Can I help you? No, no, no. Come on, y'all. You know what I'm telling you. Where do they get some of these people? I'm just saying. I'm talking customers, not talking about workers. We love our workers, don't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. And they love not their lives unto the death. Watch verse 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens. And ye that dwell in them. All right, party down, man. It's going to be great getting rid of that dog, getting rid of that red dragon. Watch the next part of that verse. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. When he says woe, that is an extremely cautious statement. It's a dreadful statement. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. Do you recognize and realize this? Listen to me. The devil will come to the earth. He's only visiting and operating right now in that heavenly place as the prince of the air. But one day he is coming to the earth. And you think it's bad now? Are you trying to scare us? No, I'm trying to prepare you. It's an ignorant man not to have some fear in his preparation. In fact, fear is one of the great, greatest things to motivate you to prepare. Fear of getting older, fear of getting a, a, a bad health, fear of, uh, of being overweight. Help me now. You go to the heart doctor and you got 30 pounds too much, that fear will make you drop them 30 pounds. You just ain't been fearful. Nobody's listening to me, but I don't care. It's okay, because I've been there before. When they look at you and say, you need to shed some pounds or die, you need to shed some pounds or die. And I want to live. Come on now. I love you. But woe to the habits of the earth. For watch this, the devil has come down unto you having great compassion. What? I'm sorry, I, the new, it's a new Bible. Great wrath, or megos is the Greek word. Mega, great wrath, because he knoweth that his time is but a short time. Watch this, folks. The devil recognizes and realizes that his game is up. He recognizes and realizes his end game is here. That's why we're convulsing. That's why there's fires on the earth. That's why we have heat domes everywhere. All of this is part of judgment. It's the battle. It's all part of coming down to the end. And there's coming a day when the enemy will be upon the earth in full embodiment. Are you here? And not just him, his minions, his army. It will literally be hell on earth. And if you're freaking out right now, 
You're not going to be able to make it. You might as well just ask God to take you home. Go find a field somewhere. Get in sackcloth and ashes and lift your hands up and say, Lord, take me. Make me like Enoch. I'm serious. Or get a backbone, get around a strong church, get around leadership that's following the Holy Ghost, doesn't understand it all because we haven't been there yet, but we're reading the word and we're saying, God, we don't like what we're fixing to see, but we're ready to do this thing. I prepared the best that I can spiritually. I'm doing all I can. I'm waiting for that day, Lord, but I'm not going to give up and give, give out and run away. Escapism is a sin. Escapism is a sign of being a coward. We have so many cowards in the church. Well, I'm just going to be out of here. Remember that? I keep telling you guys, you know, people saying on social media, oh, we're going to be in the rapture, blah, blah, blah. No. March, it's going to be March. No, it's going to be June. Wait a minute, it's going to be July. One day they're going to get it right, but it'll be too late. Is anybody? <laughs> Nobody will care. But what is it doing? It's making people messed up. It's keeping us from the Great Commission. It's keeping us from giving. It's keeping us from doing what we need to do. Watch this. I know you're, you're getting tired. It's Saturday. You've got to do something. But watch this. Because he knoweth that he has but a short time. He knows it's coming. And when the dragon saw, look what this says. Read this with me. Use your imagination. When the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he got his butt whipped so fast. Remember, mama used to say, I'll spin your head like a what, a pickle jar? I'll hit you so fast you won't even know what hit you. Somebody help me. You all have mean moms and dads too, didn't you? <laughs> Come on. Come on now. He didn't even know what hit him. Jesus said he saw Satan fall like what? Lightning. Woo! Glory to God. The devil doesn't just pack his stuff up and just like the Mucinex guy and heads out. He realized, whoa, where am I? You, I'll tell you where you're at. You're on earth. Welcome to Babylon. I mean, before you can imagine, I love that scripture right there. That just blew me. I was like, oh, yeah, God, you just knocked him good. And when the devil saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child, getting into eschatology again, getting into the last three and a half years. Now watch this. And to the woman there was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. Then he begins the story again into her place, talking about Petra, where she was nurtured, uh, nurtured for a time and times, a time and a half, which is three and a half years for the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth, out of his mouth, water as a flood after the woman. So what I wanted you to see here is that Israel is in the news for a reason because great persecution is coming to the nation of Israel. There will be war. I said there will be war and it'll be war before Armageddon. Do you recognize and realize right now the United States military is sending over aircraft, F-16s, F-35s, and a few other armaments over into the Middle East? They say it's a deterrent against Iran. Not so. Not so. It's a hook in the jaw by the prince of this air. All of this is. The war in Ukraine is a precursor to a Gog and Magog coming down to Israel for the booty. It's what it says. Is anybody here? No, we don't believe that. Well, that's what the Bible says. And it will happen in when? Due season. Watch this now. That's why the shaking is taking place. I'm closing. And so he cast out out of his mouth, watch this, that, the, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Here's the part I want you to see as we get out of here today. He was wroth with the woman. So he's mad at who? Israel. He's persecuting Israel. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Who's the remnant of her seed? The seed is Christ. The remnant is the church. So there's a war coming. A war not only in the heavenlies, but the war on the earth. And the war is to destroy the church, to destroy that child, if you will, the church, the remnant. 
which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That can be nothing else but believers. So what is my point on hell on earth? My point on this message is, is that there's a war right now that's heating up. There will be greater wars in the natural because there's greater wars in the heavenlies. And then it is going to come from that worldly type of war into a supernatural war that man is not prepared for. But if you're covered in the blood and armored up, if you're walking in the testimony of God, you'll be able to handle what's coming. I don't have time to go through all of the book of Revelation, but it's going to be a time that has never been on the face of this earth. And there's no political situation, uh, solution to any of this situation. We have to follow what God says. And I'm believing the best is yet to come for the church of Jesus Christ. You say, how do you smile after preaching like that? Because I know the end of the book, we win. I said, I know we win, and the greater one lives in us. If you're watching me right now, and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't have to be a part of this hell on earth. You could be part of the victory that's in Christ Jesus. He loves you with an amazing love, and all you have to do is confess your sins to him. The Bible declares your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, just like that. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to go to church. You have to go to the Christ, the King, and he'll save you and forgive you. If you're backslidden, come on, let's get this thing right. Let's get back into the fight. Let's do what God called us to do in Jesus' name. Father, we love you. Thank you for your amazing grace. And help us, while hell on earth is here, to walk with heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.